Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to be going through a tier list for the game. Now, this is going to be a quite complex one, so stay with us for it. And also, because the game is launching probably within like a few hours from when I upload this video, we're going to do a launch giveaway. We're going to do a $100 giveaway. So to enter, just be subscribed, leave a comment, and then uh, that's all you have to do to enter. And then I'll announce the winner in a community post about a week away, and that's it. So we will be doing another giveaway at five and 10,000 subs as well, if we can manage to get there. But this one, now, what I want to let you guys know is we're going to go through a tier list over here on pride win and before we get into any of it there's some massive shout outs that we have to give and some people that i really want you guys to go and support so you can see they put it up here in this but i just want to make sure i highlight this stuff because there's some fantastic people in communities and i really want to give them the spotlight so first of all danger gray absolutely fantastic dude knows so much about the lore on the game as well so like these danger gray and also zebo these guys have been playing flat out since the start of the ptr uh so definitely go show these guys some love danger like I said, loves the lore as well. So if you want to do some lore stuff, he like updates me on everything lore wise. Zebo just an absolutely fantastic bloke, really good game knowledge, really good progression knowledge. So go show both of these guys some love and Analytica. So you can come check out this website if you play AFK Arena, if you play AFK Journey, they have a ton of other information here as well, guides and all that sort of stuff. If you want to get super sweaty over here, so I wanted to give those three shout outs properly uh, because I I always like giving proper credits to people who contribute to these things. Now my area of expertise is more early to mid game and those other boys are just all across pvp and the end game 100 so let's go through it now over here on pride win we have different formats that you can look at it we've got the pyramid mode which most people are used to but then we've also got the table mode and i really love the table mode um because it lets you look, look at a character and go, okay, where are their strengths and weaknesses? And often you'll see characters that maybe completely shine in uh, over here in the boss battles. For instance, Corrin, he's like S plus across here. There's probably a better example of someone who's, uh, where is he? Yeah, Kruger here. So Kruger is S plus in boss battles, but he's like nowhere else in the other aspects of the game, purely because he adds this defense shred that allows you to essentially deal more damage to bosses, whereas he doesn't really shine anywhere else. So this is a great way to get an understanding of characters in a basic sense if you want to have a quick glance at story whether it be early mid or late i feel like late is kind of like a main place to look but this is where you're going to be able to go ahead and do it and check out what is going on so let's go over here so vala vala is a great great uh campaign character she essentially it, she's like early game before we go ahead and we get Rainier, who we get from the guild store eventually, unless you're like wailing super hard, you do 400 summons early and then you stargaze for him. She's like our main solution to counter tricky back row in the campaign because she basically shoots the enemy furthest away from her and absorbs their energy. So she, she can deny those enemies and also kill them. Her ultimate can change her into a sword mode and she'll like go and stab them or she can stay at range and shoot. Now, if it's on auto, she'll dash to the enemy when they're below 50%, but on manual, you can choose to keep shooting or you can choose to dash early. Um, once she gets her exclusive equipment, then she, she'll then go invisible after she dashes so she doesn't insta die uh, but just an absolute fantastic character for that uh, good for pvp but kind of pvp meta shifts later on and that's why she doesn't get s plus and she sits in s uh, and then for bosses like she doesn't really excel in the bosses there's just better dps options she doesn't doesn't have the raw output like i said she's more about that control based then we have Cecilia. now Cecilia is who most people will be using as their main carry very similar situation to vala in that she's great for story decent for pvp but not too great in bosses but if you've got her power if you've got her sort of like powered up like higher ascended than anything else she's still going to do decent in bosses but basically Cecilia what she has is uh she's got Mr. Carlisle essentially so once she ults she puts Carlisle in the middle he basically takes aggro and he also controls enemies and deals damage she's got a really amazing kit uh Hewan over here great in campaign once again like similar case here uh Hewan, i find i find early game she struggles she's uh, in early game i find her only good in campaign if you're pairing her with another healer i find she doesn't have the she doesn't get to her ult fast enough without another healer so if you have another healer you can sort of sustain until she gets her ult 
Otherwise, once she gets her exclusive equipment, then she gets extra energy and she ults super fast. Uh, Rainier here, uh, when we look at this, S plus in story, he has a transposition. He can swap positions of an enemy and an ally, and then an ally gets healed for the damage dealt to that enemy. So it's like a really cool synergy and a, and a great access to back row. And then in bosses, once he gets exclusive equipment, he then also applies a debuff to increase damage taken, and that's why he gets fantastic. I'll talk more about Celestials and Hypergenes because I have strategies I'm going to use, but I'm not going to go into that as well uh, at the moment. And then obviously S plus and PvP, transposition, manipulating the enemy team is fantastic. Thorin, in my opinion, best tank in the game. Uh, in, in the campaign, uh, you can see S plus, S plus, S plus. The dude's got a second life. He does good damage on retaliation. He's just generally tanky. Just an all-around fat fantastic unit. And one of the best tanks, if you need a tank, uh, in the Dream Realm. Uh, in the Croker, he, the Croker has this one-shot ability where it basically insta-kills an enemy. Uh, and if you have Thorin, he gets two lives. No one else does that. It, it kills through Brutus's immortality, everything else. But Thorin can cheese it because he gets a second life. So it keeps you an extra character longer. And that's why he's up there in pvp don't really need to say much more rowan is s plus s plus s I, I like i find early early game once again unless you're using like a hyper offensive team i i kind of think he's not quite as good as um smoky but this is where you know opinions differ and and this is based on pure experience because you see smoky here is an s rowan's an s plus i'd probably flip that for the early game uh but then once rowan gets his energy potion which i can't remember what level he unlocks that like 130 131 141 something like that once he gets the energy potion, he becomes a lot better. Uh, but he is definitely a good unit. Definitely good in double healer teams as well. Uh, but just fantastic healer. He's just got healing and then he's got energy regeneration when he uses his ult. Really solid. Uh, Valen, I'm not going to go too in, in depth into. Brutus, basically with Brutus, we have um, just some in, bits. Basically, Brutus is that unit where having one of him is super clutch. Having more than one is just a waste. Uh, he's got invincibility. And that's all you put him in there to stall heavy offensive enemy teams in campaign. Pretty much it. That's that's the only reason for Brutus. Like I always put him on a wish list till I get one copy. Then he's straight out of there because I don't want to see him anymore after that. Corrin is really really solid. Corrin has like supportive capabilities with a shielding for an ally. He also deals uh, percentage based damage, so that's why he scales super well in bosses, and that's why he gets to S plus in bosses. Provides support and does good damage. Smokey, I feel like Smokey's a little bit hard done by being down here in S tier for campaign. I think he's absolutely amazing. Probably the reason they put him in here is because the other healers, like, they can work in just about any situation, whereas Smokey is, like, amazing when he works. As soon as he gets interrupted, he does no healing and he's boned. Uh, but I still think he's probably my favorite healer, especially for early game out of the three. Um, so, you know, everyone's opinions differ on stuff like that. But then he is fantastic in some of the bosses where they can't interrupt and continuous healing is required. So that's that's a fantastic one. He sucks in the Snow Stomper because the Snow Stomper has like a periodic silence that he'll run out. Uh, Brian is one of those characters who's like, okay, but he, he, it's like too hard to put him on a wish list so i wouldn't bother i wouldn't stress about it if you pull a random copy of him early before you make your wish list in your first 30 pulls like you can use him in campaign uh but that's probably the extent viperion is like one of my favorite uh units to pair in a campaign push with um with Cecilia and Thorin. I think he's fantastic. Denies energy, which is really, really awesome in giving you advantage. Also, he kind of has like um, self-healing. If he gets low, he'll take snakes that he's put onto enemies. So he'll lose damage, but he'll survive that extra bit. So sometimes that really helps out too. Uh, so I think he's a fantastic campaign unit. And due to that energy denial, does give him some viability in uh, PvP. But because his whole shtick is that at the start of battle, he puts these snakes on every enemy. And then those snakes are what does his damage and stuff. Um, it, it's really AOE based. So he's doing, he's doing nothing really in bosses, essentially. And Granny, Granny's just another fantastic, um, basically just tank. Just a good tank for campaign, for stuff like that. Does have usage in PvP in like more uh, grouping based teams with Iron and stuff like that. Because she has control, she has sustain, she has tankiness. Not too bad. Laika over here. We have Laika who is fantastic for that early game push uh, because she's gives you the extra attack speed. Now later on, she kind of like falls off because it is attack speed. Whereas we can get ad additional boosts out of someone like, where, dude, where, where even is he? Damien. Damien sort of picks up and replaces that sort of position later on uh, and that's what we're looking at but like a definitely decent in the early game we get a free copy of it feel free to slap her in then we have Odie Odie is one of my favorites uh, of the uh, elite units 
great unit. Once he gets his exclusive equipment, he becomes an absolute savage in campaign as well. He's okay early, but once you get his exclusive equipment, he becomes an absolute savage. Just a great all-round DPS because he's just all purely single target focused. So he's going to excel in bosses. And then because of his exclusive equipment and his like insta-kill capabilities, uh, he gets S plus in PvP as well. Walker, Trash, Lucius, use him at the very start of the game because you get a free copy in your first temple. Besides that, you'll probably replace him super quick. Uh, Merrily, fantastic in Cursed Realm. Uh, uh, definitely benefits as well because she's physical from Kruger's debuff, uh, whereas uh, Odie is uh, magical damage, so he doesn't benefit from that as much. So that's like Merrily just absolutely fantastic in, in bossing, especially in the late game. Reese, I honestly like Reese as a disruptor, but... Reese just doesn't have the place at the moment that I've seen in the game. Um, so we're going to just leave Reese alone. Unfortunately, I do. I, I honestly think Reese is one of those characters where eventually someone's going to find a team and like Reese is going to dominate. That, that's what I'm really hoping for. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, DNL, I'm not going to go through the Celestial and Hypergenes because I feel like getting one copy of Rainier is enough and then I'll go deep into Celestial Hypergenes and strategies with them in the future. Uh, Igor can be super annoying in PvP. Uh, over here, he's at an S, but yeah, he can be super annoying because he jumps around. Um, and then he gets some campaign usage because you can run some cheese teams with him and uh, him and Nero and stuff later on. Uh, to me, to Messia, I, I never know how to say her name, uh, but she is a really, really nice unit for like just breaking lines. She runs over walls in those annoying situations and stuff like that. So I think she's a decent campaign character. And then she obviously has the one boss where she excels in because that boss wants moving units and she moves a ton. And Tandra, fantastic uh, tank for the campaign, but I don't put her on my wish list just because she felt like that's her only use is to be an off tank in campaign. And besides that, I don't really want to invest into her. So I'll use her at low dupes in campaign. But besides that, that's it. Uh, Shakir, Shakir is just a really savage unit. Once he starts ramping up, um, he can really start dealing massive damage and sustain really well. Uh, so, like, one of, he's one of those units, like, you can see he's, like, S's and A's. He's not crazy, but... The dude looks so savage that he just gets to S plus everywhere for me because he's so cool. Coco is the newest hero in the game. Um, and Coco is just... I haven't tested enough of Coco, but I definitely see the S placing in um, the boss battles because what she does is she just basically mitigates the damage. Like she she, she avoids you getting one-shotted essentially, which allows you to survive through an extra wave of enemy boss bursts. When you would have got killed by this one ultimate they do, you then live through it depending on RNG of timing because it's always on full auto. Um, and then you can survive through that and then you can get like the clutch extra cycling of damage. So I think she's really fantastic for that. Uh, Sylvina, Sylvina is like your budget version of, I want to say budget Vala, essentially. She's your access to the back row. Um, but especially the early game, she's just a suicidal unit that just jumps back, dies, actually gives the enemy energy for killing her. And then you're kind of in a bone situation. So she's kind of a tricky one to use. Um, Scarleta, once again, I'll cover that in Celestial Hypergene videos. I'm expecting new ones soon. So Trana, we're not going to cover. We're not going to cover these units that really sort of fall off. Um, Cassidy has some really strong buffing capabilities and damage capabilities uh, in bosses. So she actually works well. And then she scales well towards the end game. She's a unit that I haven't used too much. I, I used her in early game and I found her absolutely trash uh which is represented here but um I've, I've been hearing some people get some really solid uh boss teams with her so that's a fantastic unit there um seth good in endgame good in one of the bosses decent in pvp i feel like early on seth was like the pvp meta but he's kind of like fallen off like a lot since then so he's not one you're really going to go ham on arden basically good for control adding control in campaign also control in pvp uh and once he ramps up towards the later game uh that's when he starts to shine damien once he gets his exclusive equipment this is where he starts to get really really strong uh, with the every extra energy and i mean sorry the extra haste which provides extra energy and stuff like that that's why he's s plus in pvp because he's in, used in burst pvp teams um and then he's s in end game because that's when you normally have that stuff and you're good to go uh Kafra, everyone hates uh but i've seen i've seen some recent interesting things with Kafra, and i'm curious if Kafra is going to actually shine later on then we have niru now niru is, is a cheese unit you get immortality so you can cheese around with immortality on niru um and that's sort of niru's place at the moment uh whether that deserves better ranks i don't know but there is immortality cheese you can do it's not the most broken thing but it's kind of cool uh burial we'll we'll go through that one later uh iron once he gets his exclusive equipment iron 
uses his ultimate at the start of battle, which groups enemies up. This is what makes him completely OP. He's trash in the early game, absolute trash. He's one of those units where you pull him in the early game and you're like, dude, I don't even use this guy. But as soon as you hit him Mythic Plus, it's like, yes, I've got this guy. So he's one of those fair trade-offs and he's one that I leave on my wish list because I want to get those dupes of Iron for the later game so that I can get that exclusive equipment, get the grouping capabilities because it opens up a whole new area of play. Uh, and Carolina, she, she basically tees into the whole control meta because she has got her freeze so later game that is when she's going to start to shine in some of these other synergies to be in control based teams essentially Kruger I mentioned the man is just great for basically increasing your damage for physical damage dealers in bosses and we're not even going to bother with these remaining ones so like I said I end, I said I was going to go through like uh, the the um I almost said Cursed Realm, <laughs> like AFK Arena mode. Um, but yeah, I was going to go through the Dream Realm uh, separately and the PvP separately, but I feel like it was easier just going through everything at once. But once again, this is a great place to look at. Like if you're looking at PvP and you're like, okay, where can I excel in PvP? Maybe some, it's obviously going to be team-based, not just straight character-based. But you know, you can get a look at different areas. Dream Realm, who should I be building that's kind of helpful in the Dream Realm and stuff like that. Story, where you're at. Uh, and that's basically what we're looking at. So like I said, that is the tier list. Go show these guys some love on their channels, on the website, uh, because once again, I find Pridewin, Antilla Pridewin is the greatest at networking, finding many people to talk to and collate the best information that he can. No tier list is perfect. No one is perfect. But uh, I do. I just really appreciate the way he networks with people and those people deserve the credit that they deserve. So go show those guys some love. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.